Greetings viewers, Ed Budd here. I'm back with a shoe review for you. If you're new to the channel and you've just kind of stumbled in here, bleary eyed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below. You've just entered a wonderful world of running shoes. So today I've got an initial review for you of the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. I'm really excited to run in this one. I really enjoyed the New Balance Rebel in the fuel cell line, so let's see how this one shapes up. So the post like delivery person foxed me today and delivered the package to the back door rather than the front door uh, where I was camped out. There was an initial moment of panic when I received the email to say, hey, your parcel's been delivered. And there was nothing there. But thankfully, all is well, and we now have the New Balance Fuel Cell TC in hand. So a very quick run through of this shoe before I go out running in it. Here I've got a UK size 11 and a half. I've sized up half a size, mainly because with New Balance shoes I seem to fall between sizes there. So I think the half size will give me a little extra room. You know, I've got big, big feet. They kind of look like flippers, but with individual toes. Don't worry. Weight this one is approximately 295 grams. So that converts to a US size 12 and a half and 10.4 ounces. There's loads of fuel cell midsole here, look at that. There's a very strange odor about this shoe as well. It's almost a, a chemically kind of smell, I'm not sure. But I do detect a hint of suede as well. Oh, oh yes. Memories of being a child buying new school shoes at Clark's, yes. Looks like a very breathable upper here. A little reminiscent of the Hoka Carbon X. It kind of visually reminds me of snow as well. Snowy conditions, putting on your welly boots, mama calling you to come in out of the cold, collecting pine cones. <laughs> There's a carbon plate in the midsole here as well. Let's not forget, because you've got to have a carbon plate these days. I might even put some into my slippers at home when I'm walking around, just so I can walk around faster. Oh man, I think I'm going a bit stir crazy. Or have I always been crazy? There's certainly a generous portion of rubber here in the forefoot and some extended rubber pieces here in the heel section. Somewhat reminiscent really of the next percent, I think you would agree. There's a nine millimeter drop here. Some people are saying it's a 10 mil drop. If they can so accurately calculate the drop, then I'll take my hat off to them. So I'm gonna get these out for an up-tempo effort Around about seven or eight miles, I'll see how I'm feeling. And let's see how the New Balance Fuel Cell TC shapes up. Ah, I almost forgot. There's a bonus today, a bonus review. I'm gonna test out these Nike racing socks as well. Ankle size, let's see how they shape up. Okay, let's get to it. So back from my initial run in the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. Really amazing conditions out there this morning. Around about nine o'clock, it was perfect really. Around about eight, nine degrees. At midday now, it's up to about 14 degrees. But if you're in the UK, please make sure you're staying indoors following those social distancing measures. Really wanted to get the run in early to sort of minimize interactions with people while I was out there testing these out. Just means that I have to take evasive action less often than I would normally if there's lots of people out there. So seven miles at seven minutes, 10 seconds per mile pace, time of about 50 minutes and 17 seconds. Heart rate was around about 147 beats per minute. 83% of that run was in my kind of tempo heart rate pace zone and 89% of it was in threshold or above pace. So really, really happy with that in terms of a workout, testing these out really with their ultimate use case in mind. Gotta say off the bat, I'm absolutely blown away by these new shoes from New Balance. Out of the box and foot in the shoe, they had familiar hints of the Zoomfly 3, the Hoka Carbon X, and also the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. Certainly in terms of the upper of those shoes, they felt similar. The upper's lovely and breathable, and 
lockdown was really top notch. It really does blow the Zoom Fly 3 out of the window and down the street. I used some new Nike racing socks this morning whilst testing these new shoes out and the combination was sublime very enjoyable and very comfortable. The lacing system here made it very easy to get a lasting lockdown. I had no issues with heel slippage whatsoever with the TC. Though I did have one minor issue with the tongue slipping down over the course of the run. I didn't even feel it actually. It was only when I got home and realized that the tongue had actually slid down towards the front of the shoe. Probably about, about half an inch, I think it was. I think an Edbud inspired customization could be in order. I think maybe Mrs. Edbud could perhaps use her sewing magic and put a little lace loop in here somewhere or another for me to alleviate that problem. So watch this space. I'm certainly not gonna get the needle and thread out or anything like that. I'm, I'm hopeless at stuff like that. Are you serious? You should see this. Hello there, beast. Are you enjoying the sun there? Lazing in the sun, like the lazy creature you are. Lots of room in the toe box here. I went up half a size to an 11 and a half UK. I kind of feel that I need to with New Balance. They always seem to be slightly shorter in terms of length. So I felt great, I have to say. A real perfect fit for me. It's like New Balance sent out a drone and it measured the size of my feet whilst I was asleep. They then got to work in their underground labs and created some custom running slippers just for me. I really love the aesthetic kind of look of the upper as well. It really is fantastic. Very, very breathable, very light on your foot. Hardly even felt like it was there. I'm kind of digging this sort of suede effect here. You've got this engineered mesh, very high tech and then suede. I like it. So initial score for me on upper is 2.5 out of three. Just taking away half a point for the weird tongue slipping. I can sort that out, it's not a big deal. The midsole next. The midsole is wonderfully balanced between a sort of soft foam feel, somewhere between a tree ball soft mint and nougat. It's firm enough though in the forefoot to give some good response when using it for higher pace training today. Could you race in these? I think absolutely you could. That soft and responsive foam in the midsole here will no doubt appeal to a wide range of runners of different abilities who are aiming at different types of distances. I think I'd probably still go Takumi Sen 6 or Fuel Cell Rebel for a 5k, but anything above that, I think that the Fuel Cell TC could really deliver. I can see it going sort of longer than perhaps, you know, the half marathons I've been doing of recent time. It would still provide ample cushion. I think I'll get asked the question, is it better than something like the Carbon X? Certainly out of the box, I feel that the TC is a lot nicer. It's a lot more accommodating on foot. It's a lot more pleasant. It's not anywhere near as firm as the Carbon X. It took about 20 or 30 miles before this one sort of mellowed out a bit. Straight out of the box, this one was fire. It is, of course, heavier than the famous 4% Flyknit and the Next Percent, but I feel the foam here is a really great alternative. It is wonderful underfoot, guys. Believe me. It's kind of like a fuel cell rebel on steroids, that's what I would call it. Or a fuel cell rebel that's been eating its spinach, fruit and veg, and generally looks after itself. There's a little creasing of this scaly, almost amphibian looking midsole. It's also got this amazing sort of purple pink tint to it. A sparkle even, which gave me a very unicorn type vibe, which I really like. I think my nine year old daughter would really, really dig these for that reason. The carbon plate kind of hides away in the background. It doesn't really make itself sort of present. It's not like shouting, hey, here I am, you know, I'm a carbon fibre plate. It's a bit more subtle. It's just there doing its thing in the background. I felt it more as I started to pick up the pace. Towards the end, I thought, yeah, let's put the pedal down and, you know, really hammer it. And you could feel it a little more then. It started to raise its voice. The carbon plates have voices? Yes, of course they do. Obviously midsoles, and insoles do quite a bit together. They kind of work together. They've got this symbiotic relationship. In the TC is very appropriate, certainly in terms of its thickness. One small issue that I did find is that the insole seems to overhang the arch of where the midsole ends. The insole kind of creeps over the top of it a little way. It wasn't an issue to me personally, but I think if you have a wider foot, perhaps you might start to come over it top of the midsole in this shoe. So it's just something to bear in mind. It certainly didn't bother me today though. So my initial view of the midsole, I think I'll give 2.5 out 
out of three. The midsole and the shoe all together kind of made it very easy to reach that tempo pace today. I say tempo, but it was well above the tempo pace I was aiming for. I was going to look at about 7 minutes 30 per mile today, but I think when my training's reached a certain point, that's that's gone now. I think I need to reassess what my tempo pace should be. On to the outsole. So the outsole rubber today provided some great traction on those stone paths on the twigs and the grassy areas. It really does shine brightest though on road, on tarmac. It sticks like glue to that tarmac. You can really get some great push off when you're running on the roads. I had to do that a couple of times today because uh, alas, again, some people just refuse to go in single file down the paths. They've got to take up the whole path. So. I just ran in the road. There weren't any cars, it was fine. I was being safe, but still a bit of a pain, right? On that tarmac, you really do feel this solid strike as your foot hits the floor, as you sort of push off. You can really feel the, the rubber gripping. Very impressive. I think this new balance of upper and mid outsole is perfect. They seem to have got the weight kind of balance just right with this shoe. There's certainly lots and lots of rubber here. I can see it lasting. There's no visible signs of wear. I think you get upwards of 200 miles out of this one. Certainly for a tempo shoe, a sort of high-end tempo shoe with a carbon plate. I think that's pretty decent. It did all right on the grass, on the twigs. I only had to dive into the hedge a couple of times today. I feel a bit like Bill Oddy. Or is it David Attenborough? He used to sort of be in the undergrowth and stuff. I feel a bit like him. I think the exposed midsole on the outsole is going to wear, but that's just what happens, right? So initial score for outsole on the TC, I'm going to give three out of three. I always do a bonus sort of value score to get up to the max of 12 points on an initial review. 180 notes is big money for a shoe. There's no getting away from that, especially a sort of tempo shoe. Some people might only want to use this one on their tempo days for racing, maybe for some time trials and stuff like that. Certainly a shoe I'm going to use a lot more. I feel that even at lower paces, it felt fine to me. Very different feeling from that of perhaps the Zoomfly 3 or the Carbon X. I just wouldn't use that shoe for slower paces. This might be a Cinderella slipper, unicorn shoe of speed and excitement, but only you can tell me if it's worth £180. It is to me. I'm blown away by this shoe. Certainly one of the most exciting, one of the most pleasurable first run experiences I've had. You know, what can £180 buy you? Three copies of Resident Evil 3 and a Domino's Pizza? One third of a Vox AC15 guitar amplifier? One cheap ticket to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? So for me, I'm going to give for value an initial score of 2.5 out of 3. That gives us a grand total of 10.5 out of 12. I love these, I think you will too. If you want a fast tempo shoe, for training and racing. That has excellent soft but responsive cushioning and a super grippy outsole on that tarmac. I think you found your Luke Skywalker. If you've got any questions on the New Balance Fuel Cell TC, please post them in the comments below. You know I love to answer them. No shoe review should be without a musical interlude. Here's one from the archive. A great album by a band called Silver Sun. This album's called Neo Wave. I believe it came out in 1998. Yeah, I was spot on. This is power pop rock at its very best, very, very English sounding, kind of like a precursor almost to the darkness, actually. They certainly got some of those big kind of chorus vocal sounds, some big, big rock guitar, sort of classic rock style, but with a sort of modern energetic twist. I'll See You Around is a great track from here. There Goes Summer, Only A Girl. Oh, there's just loads of fantastic tracks on here. Most of them are undertaken at considerable speed and considerable pace. So it's one of those you can put on while you're doing some tempo runs and Silver Sun with their album Neo Wave will propel you forward. Right, it's time for me to mosey on out of here. Please make sure you stay safe peeps and make sure if you are running that you're doing so sticking to the rules in your local area. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up like. Hit the bell for notifications below and put in any of your comments or questions you have about the shoes from today's review. Make sure you share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.